if you remember where we left off, we were looking at a particle, a motion of a particle, that followed this position function, right? The position at any given time was given by this function x cubed minus 2x squared. And we're looking at the interval from 0 seconds to 3 seconds. And in the last video, we found the first derivative of the position time, which was velocity. Found our critical points where the velocity was zero. And then did some analysis to see when my velocity was negative and when my velocity was positive. So remember, when my velocity is negative, that means my particle is moving to the left. When it's positive, it's moving to the right. Then we took the derivative of the velocity and got my acceleration. Mm. We found possible inflection points of two-thirds, and it actually was an inflection point because when we plugged in some values for time, we found out that the, fun the acceleration was negative up until two-thirds, and then positive. So, we then discussed when this particle is going to be speeding up and when it's going to be slowing down, right? Remember when the velocity and the acceleration agree, that means we're speeding up. When they disagree, that means we're slowing down. When we agree, we're speeding up, all right? But what I want to talk about right now is how to find the distance that this particle has traveled in all, total distance. Now, you might be tempted to think, oh, well, if it started at zero seconds, I can just find p of zero, find p of three, and subtract them. That would be the total distance. But we might be wrong, because this particle, if it's moving back and forth, right, it's going to cover more distance in that three-second interval than just the difference between those positions. Now, there is a name for the difference between its start and its end, and that's not total distance. That's called displacement. So the displacement would be, in fact, the position where this particle was after three seconds minus the position where it was at the beginning, zero seconds. That's displacement, okay? So let's do that just for fun. Let's find the displacement. So the particle at three seconds was at three cubed minus two times three squared, okay? That's this guy. And the particle at zero seconds was at zero cubed minus two times zero squared. Well, I'm pretty sure that's zero. This looks like, let's see, 27 minus 18. So nine units is my displacement. Now, displacement can be positive, can be negative. So keep that in mind. Let's see if we can find the total distance. Now, again, distance is different from displacement. Can you have negative distance? No, right? Your distance is always positive, right? So to find the total distance, I'm going to have to kind of track where this particle is in space. So I'm going to make a little number line here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And not to be confused with these number lines, these number lines up here were telling me about the velocity and the acceleration at different times. This number line now is just showing me the position of the particle as it's zooming left and right. So I think I already discovered that at time zero, at the beginning of our story, my particle is at zero. Because when I put in a zero for my time, I get zero cubed minus two times zero squared, which is zero. Then I know that my particle, based on my velocity, is moving to the left for the first four-thirds of a second. So it's moving to the left, but I don't know how far it goes. But I can certainly figure out its position by putting in four-thirds into my position function, right? This will tell me the position, the place, the point on this number line where this particle is at four-thirds of a second. So, don't panic. We can do this without a calculator. Of course, if you're really freaked out, you can get one. 
So let's see, 4 to the third is 64 over 27, 3 to the third, minus 4 squared is 16 times 2, that's 32 ninths. Let's get a quick common denominator. We have 64 minus 96 over 27. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of room. And that leaves me with negative 32 27ths. Did I do that right? I sure hope I did. That's a little more, if you will. It's a little beyond negative 1. Okay? So now this guy stops just for an instant and then turns around because its velocity is positive and then it's zooming this way. So the only thing I have to figure out now is where does it end at the end of our story, which is at three seconds. Okay, well I think I can figure that out by just putting three seconds into my position function. Are you guys with me here? So I'm gonna put a three in for my t, or for my x, oh for crying out loud. These should be t's, obviously. Sorry about that, people. All right, so now this is gonna be three cubed minus two times three squared. That's going to be 27 minus 18. And that leaves me with nine. So I'm ending at nine. So at t equals zero, I'm right here. At t equals four thirds, I'm a little beyond negative one. And at t equals three, I'm at nine on the number line. So I think now I can just add up my total distance. My total distance is just going to be all of those legs. So this journey, right, was, let's see, uh, negative 32 27 Now, of course, I don't want negative, so I'm going to take the absolute value since the absolute value gives me distance. I think we can see from the picture that we're going that same amount again, right? In the other direction. And then from zero to here, that's gonna be nine units. So that's my total distance. So I have 32 27 plus 32 27 So I have two of those plus nine. And I think this is going to end up being a little more than 11, right? All right, I'm breaking down. I'm breaking down. It's true. I am going to put this in my calculator and see that 6427 is about 2.37. So my total distance would be about 11.370 units on the number line. What do you say about that? Okay? So again, total distance is always positive. You have to find out all the legs of your trip, figuring out where you moved left and right, where you stopped, where you turned direction. Total displacement is just the difference between your beginning spot and your end spot. That can be positive or negative. All right? Hope that helps. Have fun.